Good morning, Grace. Hallelujah. The songwriter just said he's not dead. Hallelujah. And because he is alive, hallelujah, we thank and praise him for being alive in us. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. We're going to just stand for prayer at this time. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, we do thank you. And we do bless your holy name, God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are alive, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that the tomb is still empty, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for this another first Sunday, Lord, that we can reflect and commemorate and think about the awesome sacrifice that you made that we might have life and life more abundantly, God. We thank you. Bless us today, oh God, as we come before your presence, oh God, with praise and singing and thanksgiving, oh God. As we enter into the gates and the doors, oh God, bringing, oh Lord God, our hearts before you, oh Lord. Lifting up our hands, oh God, holy unto the Lord, God. We thank you, Father, for you are a majestic God. Lord, bless us today. Bless those that are viewing us, oh Lord, via social media. Bless those that are here in the uh, live uh, in the building and bless those that are on the way father we thank you lord god that wherever we are you are there god and we thank you lord god for your presence among us today lord be glorified be magnified be lifted up lord god have your way in this place hallelujah and amen so our scripture reading this morning very briefly we're going to uh, read the first few verses of Psalm 34. <laughs> Hallelujah. It says that I will bless the Lord at all times. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be blessed. Amen. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord and be glad. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. My, I'm sorry, excuse me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I woke up this morning with that on my heart to bless the Lord. There's a song that says bless the Lord, but I don't sing. So we're going to just move. <laughs> Somebody does. Anybody want to start it off? Because he's worthy to be blessed. Amen. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And oh. serve the Lord 
with our whole hearts, minds, and spirits. Therefore, we are preparing to be a people ready to meet Christ at his return. I want to be ready. Glory to God. And our vision is to stand nonviolently against the oppressive powers affecting the natural and spiritual productivity within our homes, churches, and communities through comprehensive, compassionate outreach ministries. That is what we are commissioned to do. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your participation in our uh, devotional part of our service this morning. God bless you. And um, Mother is coming at this time. God bless you on this morning. Woo, thank God for Jesus. Oh, I have an awesome, a new awareness of the name of Jesus and what he means to us as a savior on this morning. And I thank him, I thank him, can't thank him enough because we don't have even enough voice in our being to thank the Lord. This time we are going to be privileged to even commune with the Lord. And Brother Paul left us everything that the saint does. They left it on record of how to do and what to do and why you do it. So I bless the Lord on this morning to have the opportunity to lead you into our communion on this morning. And he said, when you come together, and we are together this morning, not just in body, but we want our minds together. We want our spirits to be together. That you are to be partaker of the blood and the cup, the body of our Lord Jesus. So if you were stand this morning, he said, this is what Jesus did on the same night he was portrayed. So we are not being betrayed tonight, and yes, we are being betrayed because the enemy, as Mother Bird said, is out here to get us. Our minister told us the only way we can keep him at bay is by your prayer and your praise. So we're going to praise him, and we're going to stump our feet, just like he says, if you feel him coming on, you shake him off because he can't live if you just don't let him in. And all oh, the mind, the mind, we ask God to touch the mind of the people. Because everything that the Lord has not told them to do, that's what we are doing. And he just keep on bringing it. Little by little, the enemy is subtle. He wants to destroy the very thing that the Lord has, and that's your mind. So you keep him at bay. You praise the Lord and you bless him. We ask our service to come. Said that when you take of the body which is the bread and you drink of the cup which is called the blood of Jesus and we don't want to do that unseemly we don't want to be one that just doing it to be doing it but the Lord as oft he said as you do it do it in remembrance of me and there's a song remember me oh Lord remember me when you come into the kingdom, God, remember me. But I want the Lord to remember me every day. Amen. Amen. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast your bosom at the same.
thank you, Lord. Thank you. We bless your name. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Be glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we bless you, Father. We exalt you in this place. God, there's nobody like you, Father. You're so worthy. God, we give you all the glory. You are worthy of all the glory. You are worthy of all the glory. You are worthy of all the glory. Father, we thank you for every miracle. Father, we thank you for every work that you made happen. God, we thank you for every chance that we've got. Father, we thank you for every time we got new mercy. God, we thank you for every time we got some more grace. Father, we thank you because we got breath in our bodies. Father, we thank you because our minds are still right. Father, we thank you because our hearts are still beating. Father, we thank you because our lungs are still breathing. God, we've got breath, so we're going to praise you. We've got breath, so we're going to praise you. Your word said, let everything that's got breath. Your word said, let everything that's got breath. Father, we don't take the breath for granted. Father, we don't take the breath lightly. We're going to bless your name. We're going to bless your name because you've been so faithful. Because you have been so faithful. God, you've been so kind. And you've been so merciful. And you keep on providing for us. And you keep on keeping us. And you keep on being our shelter. And you keep on being our refuge. So God, we give you glory. God, we give you praise. God, we give you glory. God, we give you praise. God, we give you glory. God, we give you praise. Come on, church. God, we give you glory. God, we give you praise. God, we give you glory. God, we give you praise. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. Bless him. Come on and bless him. He's been too good. He's been too kind. We got two miracles in the building this morning. Come on, church. Bless him. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we bless you. God, we bless you. The least we can do is say thank you. The least we can do is say thank you. Because you kept our families. Thank you. Because you provided for us. Thank you. Because we got new mercy. Thank you. Because we got grace. Thank you. Because you protected our church. Thank you. Because you protected our leaders. Thank you. Because you kept our children. Thank you. Because we can afford gas. Thank you. Because we can afford groceries. Thank you. Some of us got health insurance. Thank you. God, our cars are insured. Thank you. We remember a time when we just had rubber heels. Thank you. You've given us rubber wheels. So thank you. Our bed was not our cooling board. Thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. We've got so many reasons to thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. We've got so many reasons to thank you. We've got so many reasons to thank you. Maybe you can't think of one, so I give you one. You woke up this morning. Thank you. You woke up this morning. Thank you. I woke up this morning. Thank you. We've got so many reasons. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we bless you. God, we bless you. God, you've been so good. God, you've been so good. God, you've been so good. God, we bless you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we just want you to come in and have your way. Hallelujah. Jesus. Come put the hands together. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord 
rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. See, let the glory of the Lord rise. Let the glory of the Lord let it rise. Let the praises of our King let it rise. So let the glory of the Lord let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord let it rise. Let the praises of our King let it rise. Say, oh. Let it 
Jesus. God, we bless your name. Father, we give you all the glory. God, we give you all the praise. God, you're so worthy. You're so worthy. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we bless your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we exalt you. God, you're so worthy.
and your mercy Till I get strength in my body, thou art well come in this place. I got pain right now, Holy Spirit. Thou art well come in this place. I need Jesus more than ever. I'm near Father. Of mercy and all of your grace, thou art welcome in this, this place. Now, if he's welcome in this place, I dare somebody in here to reach up towards heaven and give God a worthy praise. Give God a worthy praise. easy God God your anointing oh God that destroys every yoke that may be in this place oh God 
God, I, I, I come against the enemy right now. I come against the devil right now that seeks to de kill, to steal and destroy the very lives that you have given us, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray and it is so. Thank God, amen. And amen. God, I give you glory. God, I give you praise. Because you alone are worthy. Through everything that we have gone through in our lives, the God that I serve is still worthy. It may, it, 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 it is sometimes and most times, none of it makes sense. We go through life every day not knowing what's going to happen, not knowing how it's going to happen. But through it all, God will keep his people. If he doesn't do anything else, he's already done enough. So every time I come into this house, I come into this house seeking something from God. This morning, I'm going to preach to you a subject. Now, this may sound familiar because evangelist Sarah preached this a couple of Sundays ago. And I promise you, this was something that God had gave me previous to her preaching. So it may sound a little familiar, but this is what God has given me, the heart attack. Proverbs 4 and 23 says, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. So when he gave me this, I said, okay, this is, you know, odd. I do not like medical anything. Sarah and Trevor loves these medical shows. And when they put them on at their house, I'm like, okay, y'all ready for me to go, is what you're telling me. Because <laughs> I just can't stand looking at blood. I just can't stand looking at people getting cut open. None of that. And so I already knew my purpose and my calling was never to be a doctor at all because I, I I can't I could not stand and cannot stand and look at nothing that has to do with um throwing up defecation none of that I can't deal with people and they mess I just can't do it but somebody has to deal with people and their mess and it's so ironic to me that God, that I'm not a doctor, but I still have to deal with people and some of their mess. One of the first things that happens when you are suffering a heart attack is something that's called cardiac arrest. And most cardiac arrests occur when a disease heart's electrical system malfunctions. This malfunction causes an abnormal heart rhythm such as ventricular tachycardia, tachycardia, right, I'm not medical, or, or ventricular fibrillation. Some cardiac arrests are also caused by extreme slowing of the heart's rhythm. 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 There is a rhythm that happens in life. And often that rhythm is off because we have allowed our hearts to be broken. 
How many of you have ever heard people say that um, our white counterparts don't have rhythm? And we have been conditioned to understand that our brothers and sisters in the same race do have rhythm, right? So we are often shocked and we're amazed when we find our white counterparts actually having rhythm because that's not the normal. And we talk about our black counterparts when they don't have rhythm because to us, <laughs> that's not normal, right? So there's always a rhythm that happens. It keeps you on beat. You understand where you are going, right? When we are singing, there's a rhythm that happens. When that rhythm is off, something else is off. I call it discombobulation. You got discombobulation because in the realm of singing, you got the musicians going one way and you got the singers going another way and it's not really pleasing to the ear because something sounds off. The rhythm is off. A lot of times that will, that's what we find in our lives when the rhythm is off. Everything else around us is off, right? I have this rhythm in my relationship, but some of us have been in relationships where somebody cheated on us. So the relationship began to be off, right? You're in friendships and somebody stab you in the back. The relationship begins to get off, Sometimes our relationship with God, we stop praying, we stop fasting, we stop believing God for certain miracles and blessings and the rhythm in our relationship with God is off. Now the definition of a rhythm is an ordered recurring alternation of strong and weak elements in the flow of sound and silence in speech. A particular example or form of rhythm, iambic rhythm, is the aspect of music compromising all the elements that relate to forward movement. A lot of us can't even move forward in our lives because the rhythm have gotten off. I want to ask somebody in this house today, have you allowed a broken heart to take you off course? I'm reminded of a story. This actress, her name was uh, Carrie Fisher. A couple of years ago, she died suddenly. I believe it was a heart attack, if I'm not mistaken. The next day, her mother, Debbie Reynolds, died. She went into cardiac arrest and was dead. Upon looking at all of the stories that were surrounding what was happening at this particular point in time, they said that because her daughter died, she herself had died of a broken heart. That struck me because I'm thinking to myself, now we always talk about our hearts being broken. You know, my heart is broken into pieces and I can't breathe, I can't live. Well, somebody's heart actually did break and they're no longer here. So I looked that thing up and I said, well, is there some validity to a broken heart? And it says that a broken heart syndrome, also called stress-induced cardiomyopathy, or 
taco soup bowl. I don't know what that is. Cardiomyopathy can strike even if you're healthy. Broken heart syndrome may be misdiagnosed as a heart attack because the symptoms and test results are similar. Tests show dramatic changes in rhythm and blood substances that are typical of a heart attack. But unlike a heart attack, there's no evidence of blocked heart arteries. Some of us have allowed ourselves to be in situations that have completely broken our hearts. And so now we walk around depressed. We walk around oppressed. We walk around seeking validation because we're trying to mend a broken heart. One of the things that we try to do as people is we try to fix it ourselves. What would be the use for God if we could do it on our own and if we could do it by ourselves? Why would we need God? Some stuff, when you put it in your own hands, you mess it up. Your heart is broken because you got into a relationship that God didn't tell you to get into in the beginning. Some of us, our hearts are broken because we've made certain financial decisions that we should not have made. Some of our hearts are broken and we blame God and God wasn't even the author and the finisher of the things that you did to yourself. But yet we will blame God. We'll get mad at God. We'll say, God, I'm done with church. I'm done with this. I'm done with that. And God looking at you going, I mean, well, I wasn't the one who did that. You did that. <laughs> Jeremiah 17, 9 through 10 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. That in and of itself is crazy because we say, oh, I love you with all my heart and all my soul. But that may be deceitful. You might be lying. You might not be telling me the truth. Why? Because from the heart flows the issues of what? Of life. So in other words, many of us have been in situations that has been deceitful. Many of us have believed the lies that have been told to us. Many of us, we, we live in the lies that have been told to us. But I come here to tell you this morning that you may have been wounded, but you're not broken. Your heart may have been stabbed or it may feel like your heart was stabbed and you were wounded. But, but, but no, no, that didn't. That, that, didn't, that did not break you because there is a deceit that happens when we are operating outside the will of God. A deceit is the action or practice of deceiving someone by concealing or misrepresenting the truth. I want to ask you a question this morning. Are you lying to yourself? Are you lying to you? The victim of not belonging, huh? In other words, you never want to deal with the issue at hand. So you become deceitful, hiding behind a false identity of everything being all right. But you refuse to deal with your heart. Why won't you deal with your heart? Why won't you deal with what broke you? Huh? Why won't you deal with it? 
I know for me, for many, many, many years, one thing about the truth is that the truth hurts. And a lot of times, I don't want to hear the truth about myself, but rather give me the lie. Tell me what I want to hear. We as a people, we have to stop being so sensitive. Not sensitive in a way to where we allow any and everything to go. That's not what I'm saying. But a lot of times the truth can hurt. And instead of hearing the truth, we hide behind a false identity of what we think we are. We think we're healed. We think we're delivered. We think we're set free. But in actuality, all you did was put on a mask. I can't get no help in here. A lot of times you act as if. You act as if you're okay. You act as if you're all right. But deep down inside, you're hurting, you're mad, you're angry. And the only way to get rid of all of this stuff is you've got to deal with the issue. You've got to deal with the problem. Why won't we deal with the problem? Because in order to get healed, You've got to reveal a truth that maybe you're hiding behind. So now you've got to look yourself in the mirror and you've got to say whatever your name is. I'm going to say mine, D'Angelo. I'm a mess. D'Angelo, I said I had forgiven, but I really haven't. D'Angelo, I said that I'm free from this, I'm free from that, but then every time something happens or every time something comes up in my life, then I run back to it. Why? Because that was my safety. That's where I knew I could get my help from. So are you lying to yourself? And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall do what? Do we have a false identity of freedom? Do we say that we're free, but deep down inside, you bound up, you in bondage? And when you put all of that stuff on your heart, you put all of that stuff deep down in inside and you don't deal with it, that's when the spiritual heart attack happens. A heart attack happens when a part of the heart muscle doesn't get enough blood. The more time that passes without treatment to restore blood flow, the greater the damage to the heart muscle. Coronary artery disease is the main cause of the heart attack. So are you allowing yourself to be restored by the blood of Jesus? Or are you allowing the heart attack to happen? Are you allowing the issues of life to take control over you. Do you have enough blood flowing to your heart? Or maybe there is an issue with your blood flow. Is there an issue with the way things are flowing in your life? Are you off course? Are you off rhythm? Is the rhythm still going or is the rhythm off? Only you can answer that for yourself. You can tell the truth about where the rhythm is in your life. 
But I got to give you the good news of Jesus Christ. For we all know a woman who had an issue. Huh? She had an issue of a blood flow. Right? She, 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 she had an issue of, of a blood flow. Back in Leviticus, I was reading, and it is so interesting to me that when the woman is going through her cycle period, under the law, she was deemed as unclean. And that was very interesting to me because doesn't it seem as if when I begin to tell you my issue, you look at me as if I'm unclean. I'm trying to get free. I'm trying to get delivered. But then when I come into the house of God, I got some people in here that's looking at me as if my issue is a problem. As if I can't get clean. As if I can't get delivered. There are certain people that are open to the cross of Jesus. But then there's certain people that we turn away because we say, uh-uh, no, your issue ain't welcome. It's like we become God and we try to protect the cross of Jesus Christ. But under my understanding, I understand that Jesus Christ said, even suffer the little children to come on to me. And if I am telling you to let the children come unto me, then you are above the children. You got to come to me with every ache, every pain, every issue, no matter what it is. And we'll sit here and we'll tell people no matter what it is. But then when they come to you with their issue, we turn a blind eye and we don't want to hear. Because when we'll say, no, nah, I don't want to be a part of that mess. I don't want to see that mess. I don't want to hear that mess. But sometimes you got to deal with the mess of the people. How can you say that you love God and whom you've never seen, but then your brother and your sister that you see every day, you tell them your issue ain't welcome here. We say that we want to help people. We say that we want to love people, but then we make conditions on what issue is welcome here. People of God, the world is dying. The world is on its way to hell. And some stuff, now saints, you just can't help. Because people also got to make up in their mind that they want to live for God, that they want to serve God, that they want to believe God. So if a person don't want to accept it, guess what? It's on them. But guess what we got to do? We still got to love them. We got to love them through they mess. Why? Because somebody loved you through yours. It's amazing to me how we can become holier than thou when it comes to our mess and our deliverance and our freedom. We hide behind the facade because can't nobody see us fornicating. But see, a young man walked through the door and he's switching and do you want to cast that demon out? You want to cast that devil out? But then could nobody see you being gluttonous last night? Huh? But see, but then you see a woman coming in looking like a whoremonger and you want to cast the demon and the devil out, forgetting that you was one too. You want to talk about them folks in that marriage when all your children are out of fornication, all your children out of wedlock, what room do you have to judge anybody from where they come from? Now, by all means, tell the truth. By all means, be honest and tell them that you got to come out of this thing. But you can't act like you ain't never been there. And that's what we do. And we cause more harm and hurt than we do help. But Jesus said, <laughs> when the woman was coming after Jesus with her issue, 
you had some people, the disciples that was trying to say, uh uh-uh, no, baby. No, baby, uh uh-uh, no, no, because see, you got an issue. And see, we, we all know your issue. It's one thing to have an issue, then it's another thing for people to know what your issue consists of. And they were just, um, they were just a product of their environment. They knew the law, right? So this, they weren't really just trying to uh, protect Jesus. They were trying to uphold the law because they knew that no unclean thing. Because see, when 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 a lady, when a woman is going through what she's going through. You can't sit where she sit. You can't lay where she's lay. You can't, you know, do this and do that until it's over. The same with the man in the discharge. Wherever he is, you can't be around because it's deemed unclean. Oh, but that woman had the faith. After 12 long years of dealing with an issue, she said, if I can but just touch. The hem of his garment. I come to tell somebody today that if you can just touch Jesus, I guarantee you the issue that you're dealing with will be eradicated. If you can just touch Jesus, if I can just get to Jesus, if I can just get to the man who I've seen heal. Many manner of diseases because she she went to where she saw that she could get her help. She knew some people was blind and now they came back with testimonies that now I can see. So if you've been in a situation in your life like I've been in. See, Friday, I woke up. I was fine. Until I laid over and a stomach pain hit my body. And I said, Jesus, okay, God, now you've healed me before. I know you will heal me again. And I didn't think nothing of it. And I said, okay, I could just stay here, rest a little bit, and it'll, it, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It never got fine. So, I, 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 I was pacing back and forth, pacing back and forth. I was pacing back and forth, and I said, okay, God. Okay, Lord, now, now. Now, you said that I got healing in my hands, so I'm going to touch myself, and I'm going to say, in the name of Jesus, be healed. That didn't happen. So I said, okay, now, now, wait a minute. Now, God, now, hold on. Now, 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 I, it didn't happen for other people. Now, God, you're going to have to come through for me because, see, I got to go to work. I got, you know, I got stuff that I got to do. The pain never ceased. In fact, it got worse. This time around, I just went on to the hospital. I said, God, you're going to have to help me. Get to the hospital. I'm throwing up all day. Just throw it. Just throw it. Just throw it. I'm like, Lord Jesus, now I'm tense. I'm fidgeting. I'm doing all of this here stuff, right? People looking at me like I'm crazy. I, I don't care at this point. I am in pain. Man asked me where my mask was. I like to be almost cussed him out. I said, sir, look, don't ask me about nothing at this point. I'm suffering. I'm suffering. And I'm just crying out in my spirit. I'm like, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Jesus, Jesus, help me. Jesus, Jesus, I need your help. Jesus, I need your help. I said, God, I can't take this pain no more. Jesus, I need your help. And you know what Jesus told me to do? He said, just breathe and relax. Just breathe and relax. Just breathe and relax. So I said, okay, okay, let me breathe, let me relax, let me breathe, let me relax. I said, God, this pain ain't going nowhere, what are you talking about? Like, what are you saying? This pain is, 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 hurt, is hurting. God said, just breathe and relax, just breathe 
and relax. So I breathe and I relax. The pain was still there, but I was breathing and I was relaxing. The pain wasn't going nowhere, but I was breathing and I was relaxing. And I asked God, I said, God, why did you tell me to just breathe and relax? He said, because you fidgeting ain't helping. You doing all of this here stuff, you being tensed up is actually making the pain worse. He says, so just breathe and relax and the more I breathe and the more I relaxed the pain was still there but I knew my God had me so I just come here to let somebody know that you may be going through the pain you may be going through the struggle it may not look good right now it may still hurt but God said just breathe and relax and when you breathe and when you relax in a matter of time, it's going to be over. If you can just get to Jesus, I can't get no help in here. Maybe y'all don't need nothing from God, but I guarantee somebody in here that needs something from God to just holler, help me God. And he'll be right there. I'm telling you, the more that you call on Jesus, he will. He'll answer prayer. The more that you seek God, he will. He'll be right there for you. I don't know who going through a struggle this morning because after he told me to just breathe and relax, then somebody in the parking lot set up and hit my car. I said, God, I really need your help because people is just wreaking hell and havoc around my life at this point in time. And God, I don't know what it is that you're trying to show me, but God, I'm willing to go after what it is that you have for me. And I come to encourage somebody this morning and tell you that if you can just breathe and if you can just relax and allow God to work out that miracle, allow God to work out that healing, allow God to work out that situation, I guarantee you he's coming to your rescue. I need anybody in here that believe God to just stand to your feet and give God a worship in here, to stand to your feet and give God a praise. If you are seeking a miracle from God, if you're expecting God to come through for you, if you've been asking God, God, I need you. God, I need you. God, I need you. There's no other help I know. There's nobody else that can help me. If you have an issue and you need Jesus, I dare you. I dare you to get to him. I dare you to get to him. I dare you to get to him. I dare you. I dare you. I dare you to get to him. I dare you to get to him. I feel my strength coming now. I feel my strength coming out. I feel my strength. I feel my strength. Is there anybody that needs Jesus? Is there anybody that needs Jesus? Is there anybody that needs Jesus? Is there anybody that need him? Is there anybody that need him? Is there anybody that's going after him? Is there anybody that's going after him? If there anybody that's going after him, you say, I need Jesus. You got to touch him. You got to touch him. You got to touch him. You got to reach up. You got to reach out and get to Jesus. You got to have the faith that says, God, I need you. 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 Is there anybody in here that can say that I need Jesus? Is there anybody in here that can say, God, no other help I know?